Hello everybody and welcome back to another Tactical Fly Fisher video. You know, I was planning on doing uh, an on the water video this week, but it's like minus 10 Fahrenheit outside right now. And that's about gonna be the high for the day. And we're having several days of this. So my fishing plans got canceled and uh, I figured I would do another in the shop video, mainly as a follow up to the last video that we did on the figure of eight uh, dropper tag knot. So I had a lot of comments, a lot of questions in response to that video. Um, I figured instead of just replying to the same things in the comments, uh, I would do a follow-up video and try and respond to some of those comments and answer a lot of your questions that uh, seem to be pretty common threads throughout the whole uh, chat below. So let me start with the basics. Let's back up just a bit. Uh, let's talk about dropper tags. What are they and why do I use them? A dropper tag is simply just another way to create a multi-fly rig, but instead of adding tippet directly to that fly that's above, you add a section of tippet in your leader that then dangles uh, next to that other tippet that's facing down to your point fly, and you can tie that fly independently on that dropper tag. So it's not connected with the main line, it's you know, hanging off of that main line. So as an example, uh, here's the diagram of a uh, micro urinymphing leader that I showed a few videos back, back in October, I think, um, of a leader that I was using in that video on how to fish a, a fast run. And as you'll see, I have a section of main leader that's just cider material. Then I have a long section of tippet. And off of that tippet, I have a diagram of dropper tags um, coming off that tippet and I attach my top dropper fly to that dropper tag, and then my point fly is at the end of the leader, uh, you know, on the terminal end of that tippet. Now, I think where some of the confusion lies um, is that different folks use different terminology for all of these things, uh, whether it be point fly or dropper fly, all that type of stuff. It ends up being, I think, even more confusing in the United States where a lot of anglers, you know, use the term dry dropper when they're talking about a dry fly with a nymph below it. Elsewhere in Europe and the UK, they tend to uh, refer to this rig as either a tandem rig or a duo rig, which might actually, you know, as, as long as you're in on that, that uh, terminology, it might make more sense and not confuse the terms here because in a dry dropper rig, the way that I rig it, I put my dry fly on that tag, that dropper tag, so then you've got this nymph that's also your dropper, so how does that make sense? Well, really what I'm doing with my dry dropper rig, my dry fly is on that dropper tag, and then my nymph is on the point fly piece that's below, that longer piece of tippet. So um, that's where I think maybe some of the confusion lies if you're going back and forth between uh, the way that different folks term different things. But um, when I talk in my videos through rigging, my point fly is always on the end of the leader, and any flies that I might have on dropper tags, those are dropper flies. Except when I talk about dry dropper because then I use that same American terminology where I'm talking about a nymph below a dry fly with the nymph in that case being a dropper. So clear as mud, right? All right, why do I use dropper tags? So back in 2006 when I started competing uh, in Phipps Moosh governed rules, one of the things that I had to change about my rigging was I had to put my flies on dropper tags. So in Phipps Moosh rules, you're not allowed to tie flies in line with added pieces of tippet to the bend of the hook or the eye of the fly. So I switched to tying dropper tags, but I very quickly uh, saw that there were quite a few benefits to rigging this way. And honestly, if I were to stop competing today and not follow the rules anymore, um, I would still use dropper tags. And here are a few of the reasons why. So the first reason is pretty obvious. That dropper tag uh, allows that fly that it's, it's tied to it to be able to wiggle and sway in the current. Because it doesn't have tippet connected directly to it, that fly can move around, you know, it can get caught in different speeds and, uh, of current and just pivot and wiggle around. Uh, whereas if it is connected directly to tippet that's facing down to the point fly, then its movement is restricted and it doesn't look as real or as natural. Um, so that dropper tag is really useful to be able to give your flies a little more movement and make them look a little more natural. Another reason why I use dropper tags is I tend to get more secure hookups and less foul hookups with a dropper tag. The reason why is that with that fly on that dropper tag, a fish or a trout can get its mouth all the way over that fly um, when it goes to eat it. Whereas if you've connected tippet to the bend of the hook, 
especially, or even still to the, the eye of that fly, then as the trout goes to eat that fly, that tippet that's on the bend of the hook or coming off the eye, either the trout's gonna feel it as it goes over, or the tippet just is going to block the trout's access to the back of the hook and kind of keep the fly from getting all the way into the trout's mouth as it takes the fly. So a lot of times you can, uh, the trout will grab that fly and may not get all the way into its mouth and you end up either flossing the fish and, or you just plain foul hook them with that point fly. Uh, but when you have the fly on a dropper tag, in my experience, you tend to get less foul hookups and just you know more retention on the hook once the fish is hooked. The last reason I use the dropper tag is pretty simple. If you've got a fly tied in line, that means that you've got two knots attached to it. So you've got that knot coming to the fly from your rod and then you've got that additional piece of tippet attached to go down to your point fly. So you have two knots hanging off it, either to the bend of the hook or the eye of the fly, as mentioned previously, and you've got to cut both those knots and retie them if you want to change that fly. If your fly is on a dropper tag, just uh, cut that one knot, replace the fly, and you're good to go again. Let's move on to some of the other questions from the figure of eight dropper tag knot video that I did. All right, I had a lot of comments about dropper tag twist, and there's I'm going to break this down into a few different segments here. So first is how do you prevent dropper tag twists? And then I had a lot of follow-up questions, but um, let me just start with saying I don't actually have a big problem with this, um, but seemingly a lot of you are having problems with this. And so I got a lot, a lot of responses. And this is something I've gotten a lot of questions and responses about previously. So let me actually take you through uh, why I think I don't have a lot of dropper tag twist issues. Um, and I haven't really done any of these things on purpose in relation to dropper tag twist, but I think um, some of the ways that I fish have kind of just through an indirect route affected the amount of dropper tag twist that I get. Normally, you know, when I look, I, I do check my leader for dropper tag twist fairly often, uh, at least when I go to check a hook or go to see if there's weeds on my rig or, you know, anything like that. I always inspect it for, to see if my dropper tag is twisted around, my, around the main line. And most of the time, I rarely have more than a few twists around uh, the main line with that dropper tag, and I don't really worry about it at that point. Um, when it, I've only got a few twists, I'll watch it in the water, and as long as there's weight on that top dropper, you'll see it hinge out to the side and sometimes even unravel a little bit, and those twists really only form uh, back up when you pull it out of the water. So as long as there's only a couple twists, I don't really worry about it. The only time I go to undo the twist is if I see that it's spun all the way down. But that's pretty rare for me. Um, and I think there are a few reasons why. So the first and simplest reason why you might be having dropper tag twist uh, is you might have too long of a dropper tag. So I only fish um, dropper tags that start at like six or seven inches long. Unless I'm in a lake, then I'll, I tend to tie them longer. But for my nymphing rigs or my river rigs with the dry flyer nymphs, I tend to start with fairly short dropper tags. So six or seven inches, no longer than that. Those, any, if you get longer than that, you will have more dropper tag twist. And the longer your dropper tag gets, plain and simple, the more opportunity you have to get twist. And, and as I get shorter with my dropper tag, after I've made a few, few changes down into that four or five inch range, then I notice even less dropper tag twist. So if you're using more than six or seven inches to begin with, uh, then you might try and cut it back to that length and hopefully you'll notice a little less twist. One of the reasons that I think I can get away with a shorter dropper tag is that I tend to use very little tippet and have very little waste when I tie the tippet to my fly. So I use the 1620 knot, which I've done a video for previously, and you can find that in the video description below, a link to it. Um, and with the way that I tie that knot and the way I've practiced it over the years, I sometimes don't even have to trim off any waste and I almost always have very short amounts of waste with that knot. Um, so I can, I can typically get four to five changes uh, even out of a six to seven inch dropper tag before I have to replace it again. Um, if you're struggling with that, maybe with whatever knot you choose to use for your uh, tippet to fly knot, um, Practice it, see if there are ways that you can sh shorten up the amount of waste that you get out of that knot. Um, with almost every knot that I've tried, there are ways if you manipulate it a little bit as you close the knot. And uh, you can probably get more 
fly changes out of your dropper tags that way, and then you won't be tempted to start with a longer dropper tag to begin with. Another potential source of twist in your dropper tag is the casting stroke that you use. So I have often talked about using an oval-based casting stroke or wristy, you know, oval-based casting stroke for casting your nymphing leaders. And that is a good way uh, to avoid tangles and to try and be accurate with thicker, uh, tapered Euro nymphing leaders. But over the years, as I've practiced more and more with the micro leader, starting all the way back in about late 2016 uh, and beyond, I've noticed that I get more accuracy and better turnover, better predictability with my cast if I compress that oval or even go almost completely sidearm with no oval when I'm fishing a micro leader. And because I've gone more to that lateral stroke without an oval, then I get less of a possibility with that rotation in an oval of putting a twist in my leader. So I'm essentially removing that opportunity during each revolution of my casting stroke to have that twist added to the leader. So if you try manipulating your cast and going a little bit more to a straight sidearm, and just focusing on making sure that you get a good energy in your back cast and waiting all the way until you feel those nymphs hit behind you, then uh, you won't need that oval as much and you can probably remove that potential for a twist on each casting stroke from, uh, from happening and with that more lateral based stroke. So try that. It's something that's really helped me at least with micro leaders and you can do it with thicker Euro nymphing leaders as well. The last source or potential source of dropper tag twist that you might have is from the materials uh, on your fly and just frankly the size of your fly. I would say overall I tend to fish quite a bit smaller nymphs than a lot of people out there uh, who are Euro nymphing. You know, I'm most of the time using size 16 through 20 nymphs in a lot of my fishing. Um, it's pretty rare that I go to really big nymphs. Um, Really only if I happen to put a stone fly on at certain points of the season will I tend to go to large flies. Most of the rest of the time, you know, a 14 is a fairly big fly for me um, that it only occasionally gets fished if I need a big bead in, in heavy water. So with smaller flies that don't have many appendages coming off of them, such as soft tackle, rubber legs, things like that, then you get less potential for all those materials that are on the fly to catch water, especially when you swing out at the end of your drift or as it turns the corner. And uh, not only in the water, but also potentially in the air as well as you're making that casting stroke. So uh, because I have paradigons a lot or um, CDC soft hackle instead of hen hackle, and I don't really use rubber legs except very occasionally on you know, uh, stone flies, then I don't have a lot of stuff on my very small flies that can catch wind or catch water and spin that leader. So I think that's one more potential source of uh, dropper tag twist that you could work on removing from your system if you focus on fishing smaller flies and or flies that just have less stiff, less uh, appendages, you know, that can grab water and, and grab wind. One other avenue that you might try to reduce or eliminate that dropper tag twist is to substitute a micro swivel for your tippet ring. So we've got a customer named Michael. I won't use his last name in case he wants to remain anonymous, but uh, Michael has had several email exchanges with me where he, he's told me that he uh, basically doesn't get dropper tag twist anymore because of the use of a micro swivel. And I've gone back and forth in my exchanges with, the, uh, exchanges with him. I don't use a micro swivel myself. For one reason, they're not allowed in competition rules. Um, but also they tend to add some weight to the rig, but there are now micro swivels that are so small that you can reduce that issue a lot. And we just added some loon micro swivels to the shop that are really about the size of a tippet ring, or at least no more than like a tippet ring and a half in weight. Um, you could try those and uh, put them at the end of your cider to your tippet. And hopefully as that allows your tippet to swivel around um, without, twisting the whole leader itself, maybe that will reduce some of that dropper tag twist for you. All right, next topic. I got a lot of questions about whether I add a little half hitch or an overhand knot to the dropper tag or around the main tippet with the dropper tag. And my answer is no, I definitely don't. Um, the idea of that is that then, you know, it props the dropper tag away from your, your uh, tippet 
Um, and then you have less drop protect twist, or it reduces that op opportunity for it to twist. The reality here is that I fish very fine tippet most of the time, with uh, at least when I'm fishing typical trout fishing situations. You know, bigger than 6x is not something I do a lot. Now, normally I'm fishing 6 or 7x, sometimes in really extreme situations, and at the World Championships I've even gone 8. Um, and so if you start putting extra knots in there that kink your tippet, either in the dropper tag or in the main line itself, those kinks are going to weaken the tippet because as you apply pressure to that dropper tag, if you do it after you've tied that little half hitch in there and you watch the leader, you'll watch either the point fly piece or the dropper tag piece prop out once that, that tippet or that tension is applied. Inevitably, that weakens your tippet. And maybe if you're fishing, you know, 4X tippet, you can get away with that. But the whole point of the figure eight dropper tag in the first place that I, you know, switch to is to not only speed up the tying process, but increase the strength. Because when you're fishing, you know, those dropper tag rigs, you don't want your leader and your tippet breaking at that, that junction. And so if I have seen that my dropper tag has also just formed a little half hitch around the tippet through my casting, I always pick them out because inevitably when I have had dropper tags break, um, when that has happened and I didn't pick them out or uh, either because I noticed it or maybe I didn't, a lot of times when I go back to check that dropper tag when it's broken, there's a short little piece right below the knot where it wrapped around um, on its own, kinked, and when it broke, uh, then you see that little piece has come unwound and that's what's left. So to me, that tells me I'm weakening that tippet when that pressure is applied, when it's wrapped around the tippet like that, and it's just not something I'm, I'm willing to risk. There again, because I'm not really experiencing that much dropper tag twist in the first place. Going back to the topic of dropper tag twist, I had a lot of people tell me I, sh I was using the wrong tag, that I should be tying off of the tag that's facing up toward the rod instead of the tag that's facing down toward the point fly. Now, it's pretty specific that you needed to use that lower facing tag in the video. Um, and let me tell you why. It really just comes back to the same topic of strength again. So. Do this a little experiment yourself. Tie the figure of eight knot and do it one way, or the way that I showed it with the tag facing down towards your point fly. Then try it again and use the tag that's facing up towards your rod. Then, you know, put a fly on there or just pull on the tag and see what happens when you pull on that tag. So with the way that I showed how to tie it, where it's facing down, when pressure's applied to that, it's in line with the knot uh, the pressure is parallel, you know, to where the, the tag ex exits the knot. You get pressure in line and with the uh, knot and also with the rest of the leader. So basically you're just continuing uh, that direction and it's quite strong. If you put the tag coming out of the top of the knot and then you put pressure on it, that knot has to, or the tag reverses. And so now it's still going to point towards that point fly if you put pressure on it, but that's opposite of the direction that it's coming out of the knot. So the tag folds over on itself and either the tag itself kinks at the exit of the knot or it just pulls the knot apart and splits it. It's a much weaker connection. So once again, if you're using big tippet, maybe you want to try and get away with that. Um, and feel free to experiment with any of these things. You know, you don't have to take my word as gospel, but I've tried both ways. I have a lot less breakoffs with the tag facing down than I do the tag facing up. And if you look at the simple physics of it, if you try tying the knot both ways and pulling on it, I think the reasoning will be pretty clear why that's the case. Following up on that topic some more, that's also the reason why I don't use a blood knot for tying dropper tags. If you look at that blood knot configuration, sure, the tag comes out of the middle of the knot and it's basically perpendicular to the tippet facing down. So you've got a tag that's going out the side of that knot. That might be great for keeping your dropper tag away from the main line, but do the same thing once again. Tie a blood knot, use the, one of the dropper tags for tying on a dropper fly, then pull on it and watch what happens. Basically, when you have that blood knot and a tag's coming out of the middle, it folds that knot when you put pressure on it, splits it apart, and it just pulls the knot in two. And I find blood knots to be very, very weak uh, when tying dropper tags to it, so I don't use them myself. 
Another question I, I received was, what do I do when I need to replace that dropper tag? Uh, is there a simpler shortcut way of adding another one? And for me, there isn't. Um, I really don't like shortcuts in my rigging if I believe they're gonna be weaker. And once again, I haven't found a shortcut way that isn't weaker. So a lot of you may have seen our first uh, Modern Nymphing video or any of the rest of the series. And in the original Modern Nymphing video, I did show how you can add a dropper tag with a uni knot and just kind of jam it into the knot that you've already had. I really haven't done that in years. I stopped doing it after we, uh, you know, not too long after we made that video, simply because as I gradually worked into smaller and smaller tippet, I found that I was getting that junction breaking a lot and that it just simply wasn't as strong as uh, making a dropper tag um, in line. And so when I need to tie a new dropper tag on, um, if you go back to the diagram that I shared at the beginning of this video, what you'll see is that I typically have a really long tippet section to begin with. Um, if I have my Euro nymphing leader, you know, twice the length of my rod, let's say I have a 10 and a half foot rod, and uh, that means that I have a 21 foot leader. Six to seven, sometimes eight feet of that at the beginning will be tippet. And a lot of the reason why I do that is uh, I take a Sakura marker, as I've also talked about in previous videos, which you can find a link to uh, below, and I use that Sakura marker uh, for a cider, usually on my tippet, if I don't need uh, much below my cider to my flies based on the depth of the water. Um, I'll set that, that cider marker anywhere on the tippet that I want, and then when I go to, to tie another dropper tag, I simply just cut it at the, the knot, go six to seven inches further up that tippet that's coming down from my rod, tie the dropper tag knot again, and then all I have to do is remove that Sakura marker from the tippet and reapply it that same distance up, so six or seven inches up the tippet again, and my, my whole rig is reset. And because I have such a long tippet section to begin with, uh, I can usually get two or three of those dropper tag additions out of the leader before it's getting short enough that I want to lengthen it back out again. And at that point, a lot of times I've got abrasion in my tippet or uh, you know, something like that where I still want to replace it to begin with. So after you know two or three additions, I just replace the whole thing again and I'm back to having a full length leader. All right, just a couple more here. I also got quite a few questions about why I don't use a tippet ring for this junction in, uh, instead of you know a figure of eight dropper tag. So there's one real obvious reason in order to make a dropper tag with the tippet ring, you've got to tie three knots. So you got to tie the knot that's coming from your rod in the leader to the tippet ring. Then you've got to add the piece from below that's coming from your point fly. And then you've got to add that piece on the side that goes to your dropper tag. So you've got to tie three knots. Once again, the figure of eight dropper tag knot for me is a very quick knot. I can tie it a lot quicker than, or, you know, just as quick as I can uh, a tippet to fly knot. So basically I can do it in a third of the time that I could if I used a tippet ring in that junction. Also, uh, it's minute and it might not seem like much, but each one of those knots around that tippet ring and the tippet ring itself have surface area. And when you start adding surface area uh, into your nymphing rigs, especially, and that surface area by itself doesn't have a lot of weight, you can induce micro drag that might be very, very micro or very, very subtle, but it's gonna catch water. All of those points of surface area are going to catch water. And I'm always worried about having anything in my system that might cause just the slightest bit of drag. So if I can reduce that surface area by having one knot, that's a small one, and I don't need you know to add that tippet ring and those three knots around, then I'm gonna do that. Um, you'll see the, the effect of this drag, if you actually take your, and fish your cider above the water, especially if you have a tippet ring on your cider and tippet below, fish it above the water, then drop it just barely into the water and watch what happens. Normally, you're gonna see a visual speed up of that drift once that extra uh, surface area drops below the water, both of the tippet ring and that thicker cider, um, and the knots that are involved. They grab the water and when you're especially at the surface, it, it adds, you know, a lot of drag to the system. Well, even down near your flies, I wanna have only the surface area of my flies, really, um, that's having any influence on my drift. So 
having a single knot removes that surface area and you know removes some of that micro drag. And then the last issue with those three knots on your tippet ring is every single one of those around the ring and the ring itself is another point where you can have algae, weeds, you know, stuff like that during the drift, grab a hold of your rig and then you gotta spank it off or pull it off with your hands. Um, whereas with just one single knot there that that stuff slides off pretty easily with a San Juan slap. Another video that I've done that's in the description below. I also had uh, a bunch of comments about why I didn't use forceps because they would speed up the tying process. For me, they don't speed up the tying process. Um, at this point, I have pretty good dexterity in my fingers. Um, I do lots of tying of knots. I fish a lot, I tie a lot of flies. So thankfully my fingers up till now work pretty well. Uh, maybe when I'm my dad's age and if I'm experiencing the type of arthritis that he has, forceps might be a big help. Um, so that's something I'm gonna keep an open mind about. But for me, uh, by the time I get forceps off my pack, put it into the loop, spin it, tie the knot, put the forceps back, I could probably tie the knot one and a half or two times in the same amount of time. Uh, plus, once again, I fish really fine tip it most of the time and I can control with my fingers um, how much pressure I put on that tippet. I think I'd probably smash my tippet a lot if I was using forceps at that point and I worry about weakening it. So. Um, if it works better for you to use forceps, give it a try. You know, I'm all for anybody finding ways to make their fishing more efficient and tying knots easier while they're on the water. And if forceps or some other tool helps you in that regard, go for it. I also feel that, you know, it's such a simple knot that as long as you got decent dexterity, you should be able to do that process pretty easily with just your fingertips without too much trouble. The last question I had was, can I just use this to join tippet or to make a stopper knot, basically for split shot to jam into while they're on your rig? And the answer is absolutely. You know, I call it a figure eight dropper tag knot, but it's just a tippet knot. Um, you can use it to join tippet like you would any other time. I don't tend to use it for large diameters. So if I'm building leaders and tapering a leader in the larger portions, I tend to use blood knots still because I find them very quick to tie for myself as well and they're smoother as they go through the guides, uh, especially if you've trimmed them flush. But once you get down into small tippet, the figure of eight knot is a great knot to, to join tippet whether you're making a dropper tag or not. So yeah, use it to make your dropper tags or just to join tippet and uh, I think you'll find that it's a great knot for whatever you choose to use it for in that regard. Okay, that comes to the end of the topics of the comments and the questions that I got from you guys. Uh, thanks for discussing on the last video. There were a lot of, a lot of comments that are a lot more than normal. Who knew that knots were such a hot button topic? Um, but it's actually funny. I, as I've looked back through other knot videos and rigging videos I've done, there's a lot of engagement in the comment section, uh, more so even than our fishing videos. So people like to rig or find ways around it apparently. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am about to leave for the summer, Southern Hemisphere in about 10 or 12 days from the shooting of this video, not by the time it goes up. I, I may even be gone by then. Um, the shop will still be open while I'm gone, so keep us busy, please, at tacticalflyfisher.com. I was hoping to get a fishing video and some tutorial videos for flies up before I left, but it's not gonna happen. So um, I will have at least three to four uh, fly tying tutorials coming up when I get back and hopefully we won't be having negative high temperatures uh, Fahrenheit uh, when I get back as well so we can do some more on the water videos um, and if you have any other questions or topics that you want me to cover and down the road uh, let me know in the comments this time as well um, but without further ado if you like the video give us that thumbs up hit that bell so you get that notification on your phone when we post another one and we're here at tacticalflyfisher.com to help you uh, with your gear for tying and fishing and any other questions about those purchases that you might have. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. And we hope you're staying warm and still getting a few chances to uh, fish or at least tie flies this winter.